Hello and welcome to this video in which we determine the system properties of a discrete time system and in particular we'll look at the discrete time system defined by the equation y of n is n times x of n. Um, so our goal is to determine whether or not this system is memoryless, time invariant, linear, causal, and stable. So let's get started. Uh, the first one is whether or not the system is memoryless. A system is memoryless if the output at time n depends only on the input at time n and not any other times. And you can see in, the, in this case the output at time n depends only on the input at time n. So this system is indeed memoryless. Okay, now for something a little less uh, straightforward. Let's look to determine whether or not this system is time invariant. Okay, so the way you tell whether or not a system is time invariant is you um, do the following experiment. You take a signal x1, run it through the system, get the output of the system, then delay that by some number of samples, say cap n. Then you take the same input, delay it first, and then run it through the system. And the goal is to see if the output there is the same as the output um, where you run it through the system first and then delay it. And if it is, then you can say the system is time uh, invariant. Now, I have reason to believe that this system is time varying. So uh, what I'm going to do is do one example. It turns out to show that the system is time varying, all you have to do is find one case where these two guys are not equal. To show that it's time invariant, uh, you have to show for all possible inputs that these two guys are equal. So the example that we'll use to show that this is a time varying system is just uh, let's let the input x1 be the unit step function. I like the unit step function because it's easy to graph. And let's assume that our delay is 2. Okay, so our x1 then is going to be this. It'll be 1 at time 0, time 1, time 2, time 3, and so on and it'll be 0 for time negative 1, negative 2, and so on. Okay, so this is x1. Okay, now let's look at the top one. If we take this guy, this x1, and run it through the system, uh, again, remember the system is uh, y of n is equal to n x of n. So if we take this and run it through the system, then for times less than zero, my input is zero, so the output of the system will also be zero. So for minus one, minus two, and so on, I'll have the input zero times n. And since I've got zero times n, it's zero. At time zero, n is zero, and I have the input one, so that's zero times one, which is zero. At time 1, uh, x, the input is 1, and n is 1, so I've got something that looks like this. At time 2, the input x um, of 2 is 1 times 2. So you can see that what happens is as time goes on, I get an increasing ramp. Okay. And then I take this signal and delay it. And delaying is basically shifting to the right by cap n. So this point that was at 0 is shifted over to 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, and all these other times are zero. Okay, so that's um, what the output from the top uh, string looks like. Okay, let's look at the bottom. Again, our input is this unit step function. The first thing we do is delay it, and again delaying 
corresponds to shifting to the right. So this uh, 1 that was at 0 is now at 2. And 3 and 4 and so on. And then at 1 I have a 0. At 0 I have a 0. At negative 1 I have a 0 and so forth. Okay, now we run it through the system. So we take this guy and for each n we multiply this uh, input to the system by n. And so you can see whenever my input is 0, I'll have 0. So I have minus 1, 0, 1 are 0. At time 2, I have my input, which is 1, times n, which is 2. So this guy goes up to 2. At time 3, I have my input, which is 1, times n, which is 3. Um, at time 4, I'll have the input, which is 1, times 4, which gives me 4, and so on. So you can see that um, the signal I have here in red is not the same as the signal I have in green. Um, and so what this tells me is my system is time varying. It is not time invariant. Uh, another way of thinking about whether or not a system is time varying is does it depend on what time my signal goes through the system? And here you can see that it clearly does, because the time that my signal goes through the system determines the numbers that it's going to be multiplied by, the ends. So if I start here, I get a different, or if I, uh, at time zero, if I start uh, running things through my system, I get a different number, right, a different set of values than if I wait for a while and at time two start running things through the system. So this system is not time invariant. So we can say, no, it is not time invariant. The next question is whether or not it's linear. And to satisfy, a system will be linear if it satisfies both homogeneity and additivity. So the way you test for homogeneity is as follows. You basically take an input, run it through your system to get an output. In this case, the output would be n times the input sample. Then you multiply that by a to get a y. Okay, so I've got n x of n. I multiply that by a and I'll have a times n x of n. Okay, the other thing that you do then is you first take your signal and you first multiply it by a so that you have a times x going through your system. And then uh, you look at the output and you want to see if this output is the same as this output. So if the input to my system at time n is a times x of n, the output at time n is going to be n times a x of n. Okay, because again this is the, what my system does. It takes each sample and multiplies it by n. But you can see that because multiplication is commutative, is it commutative? Yeah, I think it's commutative that we're after here. This times this is the same as this times this, and these two guys are the same. So my system does satisfy homogeneity. The other question we have to ask to determine if it's linear is whether or not it satisfies additivity. And to satisfy additivity, we take um, a signal run it through the system, get a particular output y1. We take another signal, x2, run it through the system, get a different output y2, and then we add those two together. And we see if this is the same as adding the two signals together first and then running them through the system. So let's see what happens here. If I take x1 and run it through my system, the output y1 is going to be n times x1 of n. And if I take x2 and run it through my system, the output is going to be n x2 of n. Okay, And then I would add these two guys together, so I'll have n x1 
plus nx2. Okay, now the other way to do it is we will uh, take x1 and x2 and add them together. So that going in here I have x1 plus x2. Now my system is going to take its input, which is this entire thing, and multiply it by n. So this is going to be n times x1 plus x2. And I guess then this would be a distributive law that says this guy is equal to this guy. Okay, so these two guys are the same. So what I have is my, I've shown that my system satisfies homogeneity and that it satisfies additivity. So I've shown that the system is indeed linear. Okay, causal. A causal system is causal if the output at a given time n does not depend on future inputs. So it de depends only on inputs uh, from time n or from times previous to time n. Since this is memoryless, the output depends only on the input at time n, which means that it's also causal. And finally, uh, we have to determine if the system is stable. And again, st stability means that if I take an input where uh, the magnitude of each um, term is bounded, so it's less than some capital B, the question is, will the output also be bounded? And we can actually solve this uh, or come up with a counterexample for this very easily. So. Suppose that I have x of n is the unit step function. Then I have that the magnitude of x of n is always less than, say, 1.1, because the unit step function is either 0 or 1. But my output, when n is greater than 0, the output y of n is going to be n. And as n gets bigger, so does the output. So even though my input is bounded, it never gets larger than 1, the output is going to get larger and larger and larger. It will grow as n grows. So this is an example of an unstable system. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, we've basically determined that this system is memoryless, is not time invariant, is linear, is causal, but is not stable. So hopefully this has made good sense and uh, you found this useful. Thanks for watching.